All right, today we're gonna uh, rebuild this hydraulic lift cylinder on a Mustang 960 skid steer. Uh, we're gonna rebuild it in place. We're not gonna take it off the machine. We'll have to take um, that knuckle up there off, uh, but the main body and the hoses are gonna stay attached. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is get the bucket up, or actually take the bucket off, get the lift arms up, block them. Uh, this machine has uh, safety pins. And I actually have the uh, control valve out of here too. So this one's gonna be a lot easier to move, but the main thing is get the pressure off of these cylinders. So with the system off, you wanna to toggle it back and forth, let all the pressure out, let the lift arm sit on your pins, or if you have the thing uh, either tied up or blocked up, um, make sure all the pressure's out of the system. And if you need to, you can crack that line right there um, to let some of the residual pressure out. So the first thing we're gonna do you need a spanner wrench that fits in those teeth. Some of them will have pins that drop in like that. Uh, I'm just gonna use a pipe wrench. Uh, but this is held in with a snap ring. So all this does is pull that gland up over the snap ring. So first thing we're gonna do is take this off. The next thing we will do is take that one off and lower this ram down and we'll tie it to the side of the skid steer uh, structure to hold it up out of the way so it's not sitting there pointing down. And so when you take the, the cylinder apart, it doesn't dump all the hydraulic fluid out on you. All right, so I'm gonna do that first. All right, here we go with taking this uh, cylinder apart. Trick is you wanna grab just that ring and it's not tight. It's just, just on there to hold that gland up over the snap ring. But we do want to leave it connected so that it's not wobbling around on you while you're trying to take it off. And what I mean uh, by connected is connected up at the top pivot point. Uh, there's all kinds of crud on this one. So it's going to have to re you know, clean the threads out as it backs off. So that's uh, why you, it'll be tight or it could be tight. And one thing you're gonna do while you have this up, before you get it all the way off, I'm gonna take a rubber mallet and smack it down. What that's doing is driving that gland down in there so that it uh, will expose the snap ring. We're gonna have to hit it with an aluminum punch too um, to get it down far enough to take it out. And what we may do is leave it hooked up for the punching too so that again it's not bouncing around while we're sitting there swinging a mallet against it. You can see we got that off. I'll grab the camera and show you inside. And that's the gland in there. You really can't see it very well, but there is a snap ring that snaps into the cylinder housing that holds that gland in place. All right, so I'm gonna get the punch out. And we're gonna drive this gland down into the cylinder. And this is an aluminum punch, just made out of some half inch aluminum bar. And you don't need a real big hammer. I use a small one so I don't chip the, the, the ram on the blade uh, in the process of trying to drive this thing in. Uh, one thing to be aware of, I don't know about your machine, but if, if your lift arms are up all the way, uh, that seal may be touching the back side of this gland, depending on uh, how your system is set up. Mine comes down probably about to here. So it's, it's should have plenty of clearance to get this, this land driven back. Almost there.
Okay. And hopefully you can see that snap ring in there. I don't know if you can or not, uh, but I'm not gonna video me taking that out because that's time consuming. Okay, now I'm gonna take that, uh, this cross bolt through the pin, take that out, push the pin out. Don't use your finger because the weight of that can pinch it as it falls out. Use a you know handle of a small uh, hammer or something like that, something wood, preferably not a screwdriver. Uh, I actually have an aluminum rod I'm gonna use. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna do that real quick. Snap ring, it found out that if you actually push it in, it pops right out, grab it with some pliers, pull it out. It was no big deal. And these are 9 sixteenths. I don't know if that matters to you or not. Your machine may be different. Of course that bolt's kind of rounded off. Okay, here's a cross bolt. Untie this now, because we're gonna need it to hold this cylinder up once we get it uh, taken down. go. Of course that pin is in the way a touch. Couldn't expect that to work out any better. All right, but luckily I've got the uh, the control valve out, so I should be able to push this thing down. Pump some fluid out into the cab of my it's good steer. Get this thing out. Tie this thing up. I want to point it basically right towards the camera uh, because I'm going to use a come along or a tie down strap to uh, pull this cylinder apart. All right. So now we've got the snap ring out. All we have to do, there's a lot of fluid in this still, so as we pull it up, it's going to pump out a bunch of fluid into the belly of this thing. Uh, but we're just going to hook it, tie the strap on here, hook it to the end of the uh, lift arms. And we're just going to pull this thing out. So that's the plan. I'm going to move the camera, get all set up, and I'll come back. Okay, we got this thing kind of set up. Uh, you can see I just tied a clove hitch around there with the strap. Uh, they're pretty tough, so I don't know if that hook would hurt it or not, but anytime you can not scratch something on these, you're going to be better off um, putting everything back together and just life of the part. Alright. And then I'm going to untie it over here so that it makes sure it pulls straight. Loosen that a bit. Again, I'm trying not to dump all the hydraulic fluid out. Land, you'll feel it start to kind of bang. Then put some pressure on it. I'm gonna come over here, give it some jig, and that'll help it kind of come free. All right, and it'll pop like you know eight inch every time. 
All right, and there we go. All right, and here is the gland. That's the rod seal part, and then this is the piston. All right, we'll go over to take this thing apart and clean it up. Okay, I put that um, rod back in the upper uh, joint, and I'm gonna use that to remove the nut on the bottom of the piston. They're held on about uh, 250 foot-pounds on this cylinder. They can go up to, uh, I've seen 500. So you need a good secure way to hold it. Now they make vices for it and all that. I find it a whole lot easier just to uh, put it in an overhead up there, put a big wrench on the bottom, pull it off. So you're gonna see I'm gonna use only the exact tool from the job for the job, and that is this giant adjustable wrench. And it might take a couple of pops on it, but it comes off pretty good. You know, it's been in oil for years, so. Shouldn't have any issues with corrosion or anything like that. Shouldn't, shouldn't. That being said, my machine was also, uh, had two chain cases full of water. So, you never know. All right, and then once you get this pretty loose, so you got a gap between the nut and the piston, I'm gonna smack it with my rubber mount and get it off of there, because sometimes they're somewhat swedged into place. There we go. Get my low torque wrench. I'm taking the rest of this off. All right, and then we're gonna take it over on the bench and we can actually take the, the uh, we can leave this hanging. Just take the gland and the piston over to the bench, get them cleaned up there. Okay, here is the uh, uh, O-ring kit. I'm not gonna waste your time with how to take O-rings out or how to put them back in, with the exception of this um, seal way down in there. That is a bit of a trick, so I am gonna film that. Um, don't forget this one. This one goes right there, actually on the uh, threaded portion of the rod, seals between the piston and the uh, rod end. Uh, so don't forget that one. We just slide it over the rod uh, threaded end and then put that on. That'll hold it in place. Uh, okay, the one thing is, this is that inner seal. It goes inside of the gland. This is of all the hot water. It makes it a little more flexible uh, because we do have to kind of crimp it up good to get it in there. So I'm gonna pull all these out. I just use dental picks. Uh, people always get all bent out of shape. Don't use dental. Well, we're tearing these up anyway, so who cares? Um, we're not going to use them to put them back in, obviously. All right, I'll get back to you when we get uh, all these out and get uh, all the new. The first one I'll do is this one, so we'll get this when this is all stripped out. One thing I found was a little bit of marring on this gland. You can see it's got dirt in it. So it wasn't from me, not my fault. Uh, probably from somebody driving this into place with a, you know, something else, something steel. You can see it gouged it there. And if you look, you can see it's no longer straight. So I'm gonna have to come in there with a the Dremel, clean that up just a little bit. The other one had a little more marring on it than this. Uh, and there's another little one right there. So what I'm gonna do is just take, take that edge off, that little bump, and clean that bump off right there. Just take off a little bit of it. Uh, and then we'll get to putting in that inside seal. All right, we're gonna put this uh, middle seal and you can see we got the, those burrs cleaned up. Uh, then we just ran some uh, 220, I think it was, or 120 grain uh, grit sandpaper on it. All right, so seal goes in like, so I've put the old one over here so I know how it's oriented. It has a little lip on it. This thing's pretty pliable now. This is a method I've kind of worked on myself here. Uh, I did rip off the idea from the uh, service manual, but I don't have that special tool they have. So what we're going to try to do is squeeze this thing lengthwise and then pinch it. What we're going to try to do is get it to fold over itself in a kind of a pretzel shape um, bend. Closer. 
This is super not easy. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking for. Yeah. And the trick is you gotta have a set of needle nose pliers ready to go so that you can slide them in there with those two loops you've made and pinch it together. There we go, got it held. Reach in, these are smooth bladed needle nose. Dang it. So this, this is the most time consuming part of the whole thing. It's getting this thing to hold that shape while you grab it. Of course, once you get it, you just drop it in there and it snaps into place. Okay, got it now. You can see we got it curled up. Stick it in there like so. And then just kind of let it pop out. Oh no! Dang it, popped out to me, on me too soon. All right, let's try that again. You just one more hand, you can get this done a lot easier. Okay, so it's going in like so. Might need to reach in from the bottom just to make sure everything unfolds like it's supposed to. There you go. You see how it's sticking down in there? There you go. Gland seal's in place. Okay, uh, so the rest of them just put back in kind of the way you found them. I'm not going to waste your time with that. All right, time to put this thing back together. We have that uh, one O-ring right there, the old one. Take that off. I grab a rag and clean this thing up. And if you take a look, I have threaded on that uh, that nut that keeps the uh, gland in place. I've threaded that on so that I don't forget to put it on first. Not that that happened on the other side. So that's all the pieces I have. So what I'm going to do is oil this seal up. You have the wiper in the front and then the main seal down in there. Those good and oiled up. And oil up the outside. You don't really have to do the outside just yet, but kind of in the mood. Start oiling stuff. Can't stop. All right. Put it in the right way the first time. Saves you some effort. The trick I found is to kind of push it over to pry that lip open on the wiper. And then there'll be a little resistance where you get to the gland seal because it is. Um, kind of tight. And then put that on. That's the O-ring. On in there as tight as far as you can get it. And then I use this to drive that up. There we go. So now we've got the gland on there. You can see that O-ring is right in there. Just push that up into place. Nut. Again, this is, uh, I think this one's 250 foot-pounds. And we're going to do that with our very technical um, feed wrench. Uh, the main thing is they don't want to come off while it's in there. Uh, it will tear your cylinder up if it does come off. Okay. Do your best to adjust this thing right so that you don't uh, round this nut off. I'll just give it as much as I've got. I figure that's probably 200.
All right. So now we've got all our seals and parts back in place. I'll try to get this as clean as possible. So that less stuff to end up in my filters. All right. So we do have to take it out of there to put it back in. And this will require a mallet, some oil. What I'm going to do is push this out this direction and then leave it in just a little bit. I'll probably fall on my head now that I've done that. But you can all say I told you so. All right, oil that wiper, that seal up really good. I'm going to squirt a little oil. There's plenty of oil in there. In fact, let me wipe the inside of that thing out. Just in case there's any crud. As we take that out. All right, now I'm going to oil it. You can see all these edges are chamfered so that uh, hopefully it doesn't tear your seal. Uh, run your finger around in there, just make sure while you're sm smoothing the oil, there's nothing. Feels like it would grab and tear your seal. Because that would uh, just basically waste a bunch of your time. All right, wipers in. You just got to kind of wiggle this thing around because the tolerances are super tight. And once you get past where it's uh, the seal normally runs, it will get a little bit easier. Basically, it's got to get past where this top port is. And I don't know if the diameter is actually smaller or if it's just slicker from being operated. There you go. That <laughs> saw some fluid shoot out there. Okay, same deal with this one. Now this one, remember, we got to drive it all the way in to where we can get that uh, spring clip back in. So what I do, make sure that's got some good threads on it because what you don't want to do is smash the first couple of threads trying to drive this thing in. So, just kind of walk it around, try to hit it evenly on each side, and you'll feel if it gets bound up, it'll should just be like, you know, dinner, moderate taps, I should, I should say. Moderate taps. All right, now back that nut back off. And this one, you got to be careful because you don't want to damage that wiper you just put in. enough to see that uh, groove in there. Now the last one I had was too big once it was put in, so be ready to have to clip it a little bit. You just put the first one in, and it's tapered, so if it goes too far, it'll pop right back into place. Actually super user friendly. Let me grab my pliers. one is just about half an inch too long. Pull that back out. Clip off a little bit of it. Hands are getting shaky. Don't worry, that's not a side, side effect of doing this. I might just do that too times. And I just need to pull it forward back into position. You can just slide that ram out and it'll push it into position, um, which I guess I can do. I get it out here. And again, we're going to pump some more fluid out into the belly of my machine. A 
ways to go. And what you got to do is get those threads sticking out where you can get that special nut back on. All right. Let's see how our snap rings in place, threads are showing. Well, did you put that back on? Probably get away with a smaller pipe wrench or the correct wrench. That would also work. Use the appropriate wrench. And you'll feel it when it tightens up. What you're actually doing is putting a little pressure on that snap ring so that you know that you've bottomed out this gland on the snap ring. And it'll be the silver section should be poked out. You should see a little bit of threads. Okay. Maybe not. That was just about flush. All right. Now, again, mine's not plugged into the control valve. Uh, if you have a Zerk fitting, make sure it's on the bottom. Again, because that didn't happen on the first one I did, I promise. Tighten my Zerk up here while we've got it here. Okay. And ordinarily, you wouldn't have to push this one this far in, but since it hits my pin, I have to. And just like that. And like that. And like that. All right. We're back in. We find the bolt. We'll align the holes, cross pin, cross bolt, about like so. There it is. And it's been uh, less than an hour from start to finish to put those cylinders back together. And that just saved me, uh, I want to say they wanted 220 bucks to rebuild these. So um, I feel like it was time well spent. All right, well, thanks.